and the producer of Carrie, Kevin Mischer. Put your hands together for Kevin. He's coming out over there. All right, so as we get comfortable here, guys, um, Kimberly, I'm going to start with you. Um, obviously, with Carrie, you have the original source material, which is the, uh, the book by Stephen King. And then you have the, uh, the 1976 film, of course, which is equally famous. Uh, I'm guessing you didn't choose to take a lot from the Broadway musical, which could have been awesome, <laughs> but I'm guessing you didn't. Um, but as you started bringing this project to life, how did you decide what to take sort of more or less from in terms of you know, the book and the first movie? Well, I just I do want to do a little shout out to Brian, because I think he set you know, a lot in motion by making a fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I, I'm friends with him, and I'm a huge fan of his movie. But but I didn't take anything from his movie. Really, you know, for me, it was reading Stephen King's absolutely fantastic novel, falling madly in love with his depiction of Carrie, you know, Carrie's plight, Carrie's mother, all the other people in the story, and just thinking, my God, this is such a fantastic, you know, story. I need to bring this to life, and I need to bring it to life, you know, in a modern way, as it would be done now. Uh, just because it's so much fun and it's so great. So that was always what I went back to, and then, you know, we were so lucky to have this wonderful cast, you know, Chloe and Julianne, and, you know, they always took us right back to the book. I mean, that was the greatest thing, too, is, like, they shared this love for King's material, and, you know, we not only got to go back to the novel, but have them inhabit it in a way that was just so fantastic. Uh, you, you mentioned the book and the movie, and we talk about, you know, there are differences in the book and the first movie, some big differences, um, and you know, we know. I know in, in the the you know in the book, obviously the the destruction is more widespread than just the, the prom in the town. And it, so, those eagle eyes in the audience that were watching that teaser, we saw some a lot of fires throughout the town. So, Kevin, I mean, uh, what do you want to say about that? What we saw there? <clears throat> well, as as Kim said, the book is an extraordinary resource, and uh, and in many ways, whenever there was a question, we went back to the book. We went back to the book. So using the book as the resource, the, the destruction of the book is quite a, quite a bit bigger than the, than the movie. So we, we were able to utilize that, and obviously in today's um, day and age, you have an opportunity to do things that you couldn't do back in the day technologically, and we were able to do it. But I think it all comes from character at the end of the day. It's not just we didn't do, want to do things because we could. Kim had fun with the telekinesis because you can in different ways but it was all wrought by the character that Chloe was playing, and that was very important. Yeah, Chloe, tell me about that, that bloodbath, or I guess blood shower, <laughs> if you will. Uh, that seems like the kind of scene when you're shooting and you're covered the red stuff, like this is like the gnarliest and yet most awesome thing ever. What was that like? Um, it was probably the most fun for about the first two weeks <laughs> of it, and then after that it just got like sticky and wet, and it was like 40 degrees outside, and it was freezing, but um. It was amazing because each day in the blood, it, it, it became something else. And, and every day, there's a lot of different things where we, we refer to as like, we have the wet blood and the fire blood and the dry blood and like all the different <laughs> type bloods. And we had to have a big collection of like, because you don't shoot chronologically, you have to kind of map out what you're doing. And um, it was amazing because each day um, throughout the character, the blood became part of who you are and I just got used to going home every night covered in blood and the people at the front desk were always like wow she must have a really hard day at work like <laughs> geez. Uh, Julianne I was I, I was gonna ask you to compare this role to playing Sarah Palin but I'm not gonna do that yeah. I'm not I'm gonna hold back on that yeah. resist that urge but uh, I do want to know about playing Margaret because this is a woman who does you know horrific things to her daughter but yeah. she thinks She's doing the right thing. So how do you sort of play this character and bring some humanity to it? I mean, is she a woman to be feared, or is she a woman to be feared and maybe, I don't know, pitied maybe a little right. bit? Well, once again, you know, when we went back to the book to look for all of that. And for me, um, you know, the character of Margaret was really rooted in social isolation. You know, she's somebody who kind of moved away from her family and joined a religious sect, and when that wasn't strict enough, formed her own religious sect with her husband, then he died. She thought when she was pregnant that the child was a cancer and then delivered the baby alone. So all that backstory is in the novel, and I thought, okay, so that means her only family, her only community is this child, is Carrie. So it really is about her trying to keep that as intact as possible. 
So the minute Carrie starts moving away from her, she senses real danger and then wants to, you know, parent her. So she, it does come out of a sense of, of, of love and family and, and, and desire to keep her there, but it, uh, you know, it's, it's nonetheless abusive. <laughs> the, the, the thing that's so creepy about this story is not just the blood and the violence, although I'd like to say more please, more of all that, uh, but it's, it's the relationship between the mother and the daughter. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it was. So if that falls flat, the whole story's not going to work. So what did you two do to really, you know, hone that on-screen relationship? We tried to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah. A little. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, like, Julianne, she's like, Julianne is like one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. And for a character like this where we would have to go from like laughing and making jokes about like, you know, stupid stuff, and then we, she'd have to be stabbing me. So <laughs> it was this really kind of funny relationship we kind of had and, and you know, we're, we're cool. We wanted to be, I mean, I, I wanted just to be safe and comfortable and yeah. fun. I wanted to have a good time together because I feel like the more connected you are as people, the further you can go as actors. I felt yeah. like as long as Chloe felt safe with me, she would feel safe. We, we feel safe doing the stunts together. She shouldn't feel safe with you. Look at this film. <laughs> you crazy? Yeah. But you know, we, we, we were able to push it pretty pretty far, I think, <laughs> certainly in the stunts and stuff, and that was, that was fun. That was very fun. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, you mentioned being friends with, uh, with Brian De Palma, who did the original. Did you talk to him at all as you're going through this process at all of making this film? I, I talked to him at the beginning, and then, you know, he was off doing his movie, and, and I was doing this, and uh, it was just great to be able to, to talk to somebody who loved the material as much as I did, you know, and many years ago did such a, a great job with it, but uh, he was just really supportive, and, you know, he's, he's a great director. So Kevin, no, no split screen in this in this version. We know he had those famous split screen shots in his. I don't know. You have to talk to the director oh. for that. Yeah. It's yet to be seen. All right, yet to be yeah. seen. Um, and just continuing with that, uh, Julianne and Chloe, I'd love to hear from both of you because obviously Sissy Spacek and, and Piper Laurie gave such iconic oh my gosh, performances yes. in the original. So what I mean, what do you do in this situation? Do you almost have to purge those from your mind, uh, you know, to attack this role and make it your own? I think you know. I think that neither one of us, I mean, we've, I, they were both so tremendous in the film. One of the things that was exciting about working with Chloe is that she's an actual adolescent. I mean, you know, uh, um, Sissy, who was so wonderful, was 26 at the time when she, when she made the original Carrie. And, and so here's somebody who's actually a teenager in a story about, about being a teenager. And that, for me, I think was I just incredibly lucky to, to have someone who was kind of in that, you know, in that stage of her life. Um, yeah, and you know, it's interesting because every you know everyone always asks you know well, oh are you gonna live up to Sissy's character? Are you gonna love to the original movie? You know, and you just kind of kind of think about like, well, I don't really you know I don't know will I live up to the original movie? But you gotta be you have to be completely secure in what you're doing and what you're putting on screen because I just gotta think about it like uh, any other movie. You know, it's just a movie and a script you love and it's a character you love and that you really wanna go into. And so you do the same thing that you do in any other film because that's just your process, mm -hmm. you know? And you don't have to think about, oh, well, God, you know, well, this scene is not gonna be as good as that scene or that scene's gonna be not as good as that scene. It's, you just gotta be completely confident in what you're doing because otherwise you'll tear, tear yourself apart and you'll, you know, you just have to be secure. You know, I think the other thing to think about is I think that there's there's lots of room out there, like in terms of bandwidth of ideas. So let's say that they did a brilliant movie, and let's say those performances are fantastic, yeah, and it are. doesn't have to take anything away for this to be completely modern, two new people. And you know, there was you know, like Kevin was saying, there was a number of things that we are able to do now that for a lot of reasons weren't done then. So it's they really can exist as two separate, equal incredibly great thing. That, that's what I like to think. And ours is just naturally its own thing. And it's, it's been really one of the most rewarding, fun, crazy experiences. But, but I can say the mother-daughter and the you know, relationship in our movie, it's profound. Mm -hmm. And it really is the heart and soul of our entire story. And there's a ton of fun in it, right? Because they're titans who are at war with each oh, other. Oh, listen to that. Oh, <laughs> it's not going to be that way in the movie, people. No, no, it's, enjoy it while you can. It's all about love. Well, that's love. Hey. But, but I'll let you in on a secret that it's a hell of a lot different in the movie than that. <laughs> well, I mean, is there ever a moment for any of you, as a producer or director, stars, like when you're making a movie like this? Sometimes, like the debates you have, you realize they're so absurd. Like, no, he can't be impaled this way. It has to be this way. Or, no, that's not enough blood. Were there moments you're like, what am I doing? Well, the biggest thing is how much blood. 
So I, <laughs> I can tell you, there were probably, it was R&D for about three or four months. There was like 50 blood dumps, and it was, is it three, four, or five gallons, right? Is it thin, thick, not thin at all? Uh, do we dump it from here? Do we dump it from there? I can tell you guys, and you don't have to try this at home, most of the times you're going to miss. You're not going to hit lot. the person you're aiming for. Uh, or you're going to hit their shoulder, or you're going to hit their wig. So, and then the thing was, is it going to hit her on the day? And, and, and also, no pigs were harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no actual pigs, anyway. Right, well, not that I, no. Uh, but, but anyway, so it's, it, you are always wondering, God, how big should that blade be? How big is too big, right? How big is scary and how big is funny? Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's right. Because, yeah. you know, in, in, a, in a horror movie, particularly like this, that actually is a horror movie, is dark, but also is funny. There are really dark, morbid, you know, moments in it. These are big questions. Like, first of all, how much blood is too much blood? So every single time I would see her, I would realize, okay, we went too conservative. And I was always saying, will you put on more blood? <laughs> she literally, I showed up one day and I was covered in blood. Had to, like, nothing was clear. And she goes, yeah, we need more blood. And I went, I went, but there's no inch on me to cover in blood. More blood. And, and <laughs> exactly. with the dress. More blood. Mm -hmm. More blood. But then also, you know, like she said, we had wet blood, we had fire blood, we had all these different kinds of blood. So you become an expert on, you know, what that what texture blood. looks like and is it scary? You know, I think one of the things to note is it's an R-rated movie, which I know you guys will all be excited about. <laughs> so you could, you could depict this, the work of the book accurately. You didn't have to pull your punches. And I think that's one of the exciting things about what these guys have done. Uh, I promised I was going to open this up to questions. I am a man of my word. So if you guys want to talk to the, the people up here, now is your chance. And I already see lines forming. We've got mics over here. We've got mic in the center. And we've got a mic over there. And we're going to start moving this way to that way. So uh, line up now. We'll get in as many as we can. Uh, we'll start with Kickass over there if he can get his hood off. I have a I have a feeling costume. this one might be for Chloe. Uh, that's just a guess, but <laughs> I think it's what gives you that idea? Um, yeah, this one is for Chloe. Um, <laughs> See, <laughs> you're psychic. Um, so I'm a huge Kick-Ass fan, obviously. Huge fan <laughs> of Carrie too. Horror movie, you know, buff. Um, it's really excited for that. But um, I have a question for Chloe, uh, and just a little lead up to the question. Um, me and um, Hit Girl here, Hit Girl here, uh, we're actually on the cover of Kick-Ass 2, the comic book. Right. Like, our costumes are on the cover of that. Uh -huh. And uh, last week, I got a call, um, and I'm actually going to be in Kick-Ass 2. Oh, you got yes. the role. Yeah, that's great. Um, Good job. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I almost didn't make it to this because I have to fly out on Monday to, uh, uh, I, don't, I won't say where the set is, but to the set. Now you're um, bragging. Now I you're know, just bragging. bragging I know. Dude. Okay. Boo -hoo, it I went from endearing to annoying really quick. No. Um, so my, uh, my question is just, uh, I was really bummed that the autograph session got canceled, and I would have said all that in the autograph session, not waste of time here. Uh, but is there any way we could like, meet up real quick after this and just talk real quick? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Be wait. nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. I, I might see you in London. Okay, then perfect. We can have our moment there. Awesome. Okay. I, Thank you. Right. Okay. <laughs> I Sounds think like you a might date. have to, and you might have to contend with her mother. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it with the mom. Yeah. <laughs> Match made in heaven. All right, yes, right in the center here. Uh, you need, need to use uh, the mic. Sorry. Uh, this is from Miss Moore, which mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very proud to say that despite all, everything, you know, my favorite film of yours was. Hannibal, you were, <laughs> you know what I mean? I really, really loved you in that. Thank you. That's why I'm here. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, just a comment, no question. That will oh, work. that was Man, a big great. fan, big fan right Thank there. Thank you. All right, we're going over to the right, right over here. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi, hello. Hi, my name is Paul. This question is um, for Chloe. Um, I'm a big fan since Kick Ass. Thank and, uh, you. You being hit girl. Um, uh -huh. My question is, um, how has your previous experience prepared you for this role you're taking in Carrie? And what were the new things you've learned as an actress uh, being Carrie? Um, it's interesting. You know, I, I've, I was talking to Kim um, around the end of the movie, and we were talking about the transformation that's happened from the moment that I auditioned for this role to the moment of the end of this movie. Because there's a moment during filming where 
she, because like in, in the beginning during the audition process, she was like, okay, well, let's see if she can be older, because I'm only 15, playing like 17, 18. She was like, well, let's see if you can play older and you can, you know, embody that character. And then in the middle of the movie, Kim looked at me and she said, I need you to be younger. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> I went, but the whole problem was that I wasn't old enough. <laughs> I was like, how, what do you mean? And then, um, Cause yeah. Because she transformed. Exactly. Yeah. And it was, it was this huge learning experience for me because I went from this actress who had never been given the chance to fully go there. And then I worked with people like Julie and Kim who allowed me to go there. It actually facilitated that immensely to the point of where now it's like hard for me to look at another character and be like, oh my God, you know, I want that back. I want that challenge. I want that everyday learning curve, you know? And, um... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, nothing can prepare you for that. It's just learning. Yeah. Right, thank, you for, thank you very much. Did the subject matter give you any flashbacks to your time in Emdeville Horror? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my first movie I ever did. <laughs> I, yeah, no, yeah, it did actually, it did. Not yeah. quite as scary though. All right, yeah. well, let's move over here to the left, yes. Hi, um, my question is for Chloe. Um, as audience members, we've seen you in a lot of edgy roles over the years, and I was just wondering if that's what you prefer to do, or if you'd rather be like a bubbly girl next door type <laughs> of actress someday. Um, well, you know, honestly, my main thing is is wanting to be someone I'm like is I you know I'm, I'm a happy girl, and I you know I have a really good family, and my mom loves me, and my, I have a very supportive family, and everything, and I, I I have immense love from all my family, and I like playing characters that aren't me and that actually challenge me because it's not as fun to just play yourself every day, you know, because you already do. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a lot of my movies do fall into the darker genre, but that's just because I guess it's things that I am more gravitated to and it's roles that I, I like doing more and that actually challenge me and make me happy. And um, that's pretty much, yeah, I don't, I don't exactly look for a genre and go, ah, I want that one. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, center aisle. Hi, Kim. Uh, so glad that a female director is taking on a blockbuster. We need more of that. Yeah, yeah. right. Good call, man. Thank you. Also, just curious, uh, how did bullying as a modern social issue inform your adaptation of the book? Well, um, like I said, I, you know, I'm very character and story driven. So I fell in love with Carrie right, who she was and what she was going through and all these relationships um, and really wanted to bring that to life and saw the fun in that. Uh, you know, the idea of bullying, I mean, certainly there is a wider awareness of bullying since there was in the time that, you know, De Palma made his movie and in the time that Stephen King wrote his book. So, you know, I certainly think that in some of the scenes there's an awareness by the teachers and the school, you know, that these phenomena happen and they have to be more aware of it. I can't give away plot details, but we have a whole really fun, dangerous through line of something that one of the girls does with some social media that builds and builds and builds until it climaxes at the end. And that's just a representation of the modern world, you know, of what people are going through. Uh, I think, you know, perhaps what's been happening, you know, in our culture only makes the story more relevant. But, you know, you go to the movies to fall in love with a character and to be taken on a journey. So I think hopefully to be a good director is to be aware of all that stuff, but to let the audience, you know, fall into the story. Thank you. Yeah, great question, man. Uh, yes, right over here. Hi. I was just curious uh, exactly how involved Stephen King was with the, this production, if at all. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Stephen King generally, as a rule, I think takes a hands-off process with the filmmakers and the, fil the people making the film in the day, but we plan on showing them the film. We're very excited. As I said, I think the thing that is special about this film is that Kim has harkened back to the book, as have Julianne and Chloe. So I think he'll be quite pleased and surprised. Thank you. All right, uh, back over here. Hello, this question is for anybody that's up, really up there. All right. <laughs> that's <Thank> everybody. <laughs> Do you have any tips for a young filmmaker who's oh. trying to make a movie? <laughs> That's what filmmakers tend to do, yeah. yeah. Any, uh, you know, my thing is just really, really find a character that you're absolutely wildly passionate about and a story that you absolutely love yeah. and get as inside of it as you can. Uh, you know, in, in addition to all your passion, like know your craft. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I look at these two, you know, I look at this guy and everybody. If you're going to do any good work, you know, in our business, you have to have the great passion, but you have to know what you're doing. So. 
That was a great question, man, because if you yeah. don't know, ask, right? Like, yeah. Great question. And, and don't take no for an answer. Yeah. That's the most important Thank thing. You. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thanks, I just heard that. <laughs> yes, right here, center off. Uh, hi, I, I was also wondering about the idea of bullying and that's how that informed your movie. And I guess there's, for me, I always wonder about the balance between portraying the bullied as sort of perfect or in a movie like this, and obviously I haven't seen yours, um, the bullied is somebody who goes off the deep end. And so how you kind of work with that. And I was also wondering if Julie had any favorite teachers that you might think about. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, Julie. How, How you are you? John is a teacher at my kid's school good. at Friends oh, Center. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's funny. Yeah. I told you I'd come. Do you know what? I don't know if any of you have read Stephen King's book on writing. Um, but it's a wonderful book and really just talks about all, how, yeah, he, how he started writing and, and what, he, what he thinks about writing. And in it, he talks about the germination of the Carrie story. And he remembered two, two girls that he went to um, school with. And both were incredibly isolated, one by their parents' religious, religious beliefs and the other one by poverty. And he talked about the repercussions of that, how, they, how, how isolated they were in school, how it continued into their adult lives. And sadly, neither one of them lived very long. But he took this really kind of big, important idea about social marginalization wow. and put it in Carrie as an entertainment. And so, you know, as, as Kim was saying, you can't, we're not making a polemic here. You know, we're making a, a, a movie, an entertaining movie, really about adolescence and power and growing up and mother-daughter relationships. But in it, we're reflecting something that does happen in society and happens in schools. And like you said, I think very accurately, John, um, these people are flawed. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. You're seeing a, a flawed, a very flawed mother. You're seeing students, high school students who are confused and conflicted. You see a girl, you know, Sue Snell, who tries to do better and oddly ends up making everything worse. But I think that one of the great things about Stephen King and about this story is that it allows us to participate in many different ways and sort of mm. reflect on it rather than uh, actually come up with an answer. But, but you bring up a, a really great thing, which is when you're developing a character, no, you don't want the, the person who's gonna uh, get, say, hurt in the beginning, Carrie, to be perfect and to be all innocent. I mean, she has to be complicated, so yeah. you're engaged. Right. But also, you know, like Julianne said, it's like, well, the mother has her flaws but also Sue Snell makes the wrong decision. And then Chris, the girl who's perpetrating it, you actually have to find the other side of her, which is where's mm -hmm. her vulnerability, where's her innocence, and why does she keep doing it? Yeah. That was one of the biggest <laughs> questions that we looked at from the beginning, and we're like, how does this girl who starts throwing tampons graduate right to killing a pig and dumping pig's blood? Mm -hmm. And the only way you can keep the character active is if she has a whole other side to her. So they all need to be dimensional. Yeah. And then you're pulled into the story, and that's more what life is like anyway, you know? Well, it's mm -hmm. what we have to find with the kids in, in schools, right. too. You can't see a, quote, bully as somebody who's completely evil. No, that's exactly. That's no, and they, yeah. they might be, but that's pretty rare. But right, you yeah. want to see, mm -hmm. no, there, there are kids. There are people. There's usually a reason for it. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, exactly. but you want to be, and also you want to go on the journey and see why it keeps escalating. Otherwise, the movie kind of stops. Mm -hmm. Are you guys as freaked out as I am that we basically just had a parent-teacher conference That's at Comic-Con? That's right, Comic -Con? right here. I mean, is that just me, like... <laughs> you never know. Comic-Con, it brings you. you everything. That was great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Give her a good grade. All right. Uh, right over here. Yes, sir. Hi, this question is for Chloe. Um, I saw in an interview that uh, you made the dress for Carrie in the movie, and you... you I wanted to know if you added certain details to the dress that actually reflect the character that you put in Chloe. I I made a, a dress. dress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm nowhere near the amazing costume designers that actually constructed the dress. Yeah. <laughs> she can barely partner. sew. I can wear yeah. it. So. Wait, didn't you make a bag? <laughs> yes, yeah, she made a tote made bag. A bag. I made a, a tote. tote. <laughs> I made a, a tote. tote. Yeah. A tote I'm, dress. I'm not a seamstress. The carry line <laughs> coming. <laughs> No, I did make some dress, though. So. Yeah. All right, I hope you come back next year for Kick-Ass, too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, right over here. What's up, man? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, Pushing your luck already. <laughs> Look, they're already okay. breaking. Look, they're taking you down okay, right there. Okay, one question. Uh, for everyone specifically, 
About how much blood do you think? How many liters of blood do you think you use during production? <laughs> he wants an exact number. Yeah, oh, wow. Not exact, though. No, that's, <laughs> actually, when you're trying to get a, a job, I think, at an investment firm, they ask you questions like that. Um, my, my friends in Harvard have said that. Uh, well, let's say if it was five gallons per bucket, we did at least 50 tests. That's 250. Oh, we wow. were doing, um, and then we were bloodying you up. <laughs> I'm going to go with a thousand gallons of fake blood. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Wow. Let's call it a thousand gallons. A thousand. Okay. Yeah. You um, want more? Uh, no, I'm fine. Thanks, <laughs> bye. Uh, all right, thanks. All right, last question right here. Yes. Hey guys, um, I was just wondering. Uh, you kind of talked about this already, but did you have? Do you feel any pressure um, to uh, recreate, like while recreating the script and the characters, like reimagining it? Do you feel any pressure to stray away from the original story, or like? how everyone's going to react to it? I mean, I'll talk for myself. Oh, I didn't feel any pressure, I think, because I genuinely, you know, only did the project because I fell so deeply in love with the story and just thought it was infectious, fun, terrifying, you know, and great, and just thought I would do it in a way that, you know, with, you know, a great team that, that was really a blast. So yeah. I respect the original, you know, but I, I, didn't, I didn't feel any pressure. I mean, I feel pressure just to live up to doing a good story, and that's always challenging. It's just in well, general. by the looks, it looks really good. So I think it's going <laughs> to create its own like, part in the series. You know? Well, I remember when I was at the first read-through, and um, I'm going to give a shout-out to Ansel, our Tommy who's out there. Where is he? <laughs> anyway, right there. So, and I saw Ansel and Chloe reading the scene at the, you know, the, scene at the prom. And, and you know, I, you know uh, Chloe's 15, Ansel's 18, and I was, it was so exciting to see, and so different, and it really kind of took me away, and, and I was a huge fan of the original movie, but I thought, wow, you know, it's just great to see it reimagined, too. Yeah. All right, thank you. You know, it's an important thing to know is that, yeah. remember, the story is really about teenagers to some degree, so yeah, there's, exactly. we talk a lot about the original movie, and there's a great nostalgic audience for it, but it's depicting the life and times of these kids who are experiencing it, and hopefully it'll be a metaphor for what kids are going through today, and... I think that broadens the audience for everybody and makes it a, a richer experience that speaks to 2012, 2013, right. and isn't just a, a nostalgia trip. So you sort of have a little bit of everything in this movie. Right. Well, guys, I want to thank you. But before we go, Chloe, I understand that there's some sort of special way for people to get in touch with the White family. Oh. I don't know why they'd want to do that. Yeah. But I understand there's something going on here. What's that oh, all about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a number that you guys can call, and it's to Carrie's house. And depending on who you call, at what time, you either, either get Julianne, Margaret, or <laughs> Carrie. It's, uh, just do it. It's fun. Yeah. See, the phone number's up on there the screen. Is. Call Write it. Write it down. Call, call it. it. Do it's it. Fun. If you dare. Do it. It's scary. <laughs> they, it's dare, scary. they double dare you. It's yeah. spooky. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to Chloe, Julianne, Kimberly, and Kevin. The Evil Dead's coming up in about 60 seconds. Thanks a lot, guys.